okay so this course is basically having the complete selenium web driver with java and it will be covering main about the core java selenium web driver test ng maven end to end automation framework also we will create in that and some devops concept also we will see like how we can use the git and github and the jenkins as well for our execution wise and the syllabus has been already shared with you so you must have gone with all the topics and syllabus that all of these topics we will be covering in our automation course so we'll direct jump to our slides like uh, so what is the training objectives and the benefits from that so all the automation topics uh, i will be covering from the scratch i will tell the basic concept about that all I will explain with some real time examples. We will take some website and we'll do the example on that particular website. And it will provide a good confidence in automation testing after completing this course. And I will provide start to end automation testing knowledge, whatever I have the knowledge in my automation. So I will be sharing all the knowledge with you. And step by step detailed explanation will be there. So uh, all the details have been mentioned in the PPTs and the same I will be explaining by doing uh, practical in the clips as well so it's all like one framework also will create that is some like real time framework we will be creating that gets used in the company as well and some resume preparations also if any need i will help in resume preparation as well and some mock interviews also if needed we can take the some mock interviews as well in that case so in that we will cover some interviews questions that are mostly asked in the interviews based on the experience so first one is like what is the our introductions to software testing so what is the software testing so software testing is basically to test the output with the required input so like if you're uh, expected some actual inputs uh, some output is there and if there is some difference so it means there will be defect or it can be an issue so if we are early identifying this kind of error or bugs in our software so to do that we are called it as a software testing so software testing is a method to check whether the actual software product matches the expected requirement or not and to ensure our product should be the defect free if it if it will not be defect free and if it go in the production or live so there can be an issues like it can uh, harm to our business so it can be a loss for our financial things as well so if early we catch it so early we can save the time and money for our client or for our project <coughs> so that so that's like we have to do the software testing for that so the purpose of software testing is to identify some errors is there or some gaps between the application or some missing requirement is there with respect to the actual requirement so to do that we need the software testing for that and why software testing is so important because if there is any bug or error in the software so it can be identified early and can be solved before delivery of the software product properly tested software product ensures reliability security and high performance which further results in time saving and cost effectiveness and the customers customer satisfactions so that's why we need the software testing for that so there is a concept of the error fault and the failure so how it happens and what is the sequence for our error fault and failure so this can be an interview questions as well like what is the difference between error fault and failure so whenever a programmer write down the code to develop any application so at the time he can make some error there in the programming language right so he can he is not able to write the proper code for that he has done some mistake in that so if programmer done some error so that can result in the fault as well so that we call it as a defect or a bug in the software code and if this particular fault will execute it and it will go in our uh, system so that can be uh, produce the wrong result to us and it can be caused a failure so first of all error will be there by the programmer and if that particular error go in our website and if we don't catch it so that we called it as a defect or a bug and if we don't catch that particular defect in our application and if it goes in the live so in that case it can produce the wrong results 
and that we call it as a failure. So in that case, our system can be failed. So that's the difference between error, fault, and the failure. So what are the different type of software testing is this? The software testing we can do in the two ways. Either we can do it manually or either we can do it with the help of a automation as well. But nowadays automation tools are preferred for the software testing because of multiple reasons that also we will discuss like if we want some regression pack or some smoke pack or some build verification test cases. So definitely we need, we are more focusing nowadays on the automation side so that we can re-execute our test case n number of times and we can save the some cost, time and money for our clients. So we are looking for some automation testing. But if we don't have any automation, so in that case, uh, uh, like uh, the manual testers will be there. So they will be performing all the uh, test cases in the manual way, but it will be some hectic uh, for them. So, but there are two ways that we can do the software testing. One is the manual way and one is the automation way. So in the manual way, it includes the testing of the software manually. So without using any automated tool or any scripts. So you tester takes over the role of an end user. So it will be think like from the uh, point of an end user who will be using the application and he will test all the possible positive and negative scenarios manually mm -hmm. and will check the unexpected behavior for the bug for that. And if the same thing, whatever the manual tester is doing, if the same thing, if we will automate with the help of a, some automation tool or with the help of a, some script. So in that case, if you're doing the, uh, the testing for in that way, so we are called it as an automation testing. So automation testing is the exact process for automating the manual steps. So in this, whenever the tester writes, writes the scripts, and user another software to test the product so this process involves automation of a manual process and automation testing is used to rerun the test scenarios that were performed manually quickly and repeatedly so what are the different software testing methods are there <clears throat> so there are white box testing is there black box testing is there and the gray box testing is there so white box testing is mainly used whenever you are doing the testing around the coding part like a developer is there who is writing the logic to develop any application and if he knows what is actually written to develop that particular scenario or that particular requirement and if he is doing such kind of a testing around the code so that kind of that kind of a testing is called it as a white box testing and unit testing is a part of a white box testing that mostly the developers do the unit testing whenever they develop any functionality and after development they do some unit testing that some positive scenario he will check it is working fine or not and once it is working then he will deliver that particular jira or that particular requirement to the tester to test in the more exploratory way so he can test more positive and negative scenarios on there because developers knows what he has written for this particular requirement what conditions he has put for this particular logic so if he is testing around the coding part so in that way he is doing the white box testing for that and meanwhile in the black box testing so the test the technique of testing without having any knowledge of the interior working of the application because as a tester i don't know what developer has written for this for this particular requirement but still, if I'm testing the requirement with some positive and negative scenarios without knowing, without knowing uh, what is exactly happening in the back end or behind for that particular action. So in that way, we are doing the black box testing and we call it as a behavior specific based or input output based testing because we give some input to that particular action and we expect some output from that without knowing how it is working in the behind. So we call it as a black box testing. And gray box testing is there which is a combination of a both white box as well as the black box testing. If we want to do some more exploratory testing in our uh, requirements in that case if we come to know about some logic or some policy or some conditions from the developer and we do some kind of a testing around that as well. So in that case, we because uh, test is already doing the black box testing and if we do some kind of a testing around the coding as well or some conditions for that particular uh, logic or requirements. So in that case, 
he's doing the gray box testing so in that way he can find out the more bugs or he can find out the defect early in our application so that is our gray box testing now if we talk about the black box testing so like uh, there are multiple uh, different type of a black box testing is there like functional testing and the non-functional testing so functional testing this is a type of a black box testing that is based on the specification of the software that has to be tested so in that mainly we will be testing about the functionality like what behavior we are expecting and the same behavior are we getting or not so if we are testing the particular behavior for particular action or a button or any particular feature or requirement so in that case if you are testing that behavior so we call it as a functional testing the application is tested by providing the input and then the results are examined that needs to be confirmed to the functionality so there are different levels or a different type of a functional testing that we have to perform so one as i have already discussed like the unit testing is there so that this type of a testing is performed by the developers before the setup is handed over to the testing team to formally execute the different positive and negative test cases so test unit test is performed by the respective developers on the individual unit of a source code assigned areas so if this type of a testing is performed so that type of testing we call it as a unit test in course he is also doing the functionality only because he is also checking the functionality whatever he has developed so that is working fine or not so in that case he is also testing the functionality but at the small level or at the unit level so that's why it is called as a unit testing there so like after the handover and now tester has to do the testing exploratory and he has to do some more positive negative scenarios so he has to do the integration testing because now the particular module or the requirement will be there and he has to test it with some other functionalities as well so integration testing is defined as a type of a testing where software modules are integrated logically and will be tested as a group so a typical software project consists of the multiple software modules called as a uh, coded by the different programmers so the purpose of this level of testing is to expose defects in the interaction between these software modules and when they are integrated and there is a system testing as well which we call it as end to end testing like for our uh, application is there like e-commerce website is there it is having the home page it is having the product page it is having the selection of the product page it's have the cart page payment page confirmation page so all are having the different modules are there and whenever uh, all these modules are getting combined by one uh, by each other and if we are testing the complete system as a whole so in that case we call it as a system testing because we want to check nothing should be impacted because of uh, some functionality has been developed inside one module and because of that nothing should be impacted in our complete system it should be working fine so it should not impact on any other modules as well so so if we are doing that kind of a testing we call it as a system testing after the system testing is done so uh, uh, before going into the live so uh, generally what we do we give the demos to our client that this is the functionality requirement was there and this has to be developed and this way we have developed the functionality and how this is working for us so if we are giving some demos uh, uh, to the client and client is giving the sign off for that and uh, we have he will perform some uh, one or two scenarios as well in that case and if he thinks that everything is fine whatever he was looking for and the same has been de uh, delivering so in that way he will be doing the accept test testing if everything is fine only in, uh, after that he will do the sign of that particular requirement and then particular requirement will go in the live otherwise he can reject also sometimes if he finds uh, whatever uh, the requirement was there that is not getting delivered so in that case he don't do the sign off for that and that particular zero or requirement will go in the backlog for you and again you have to do the rework on that so even in accept test testing also sometimes uh, zeros or particular requirement will get reject also so that's we call it as a accept test testing for this the next one is the non functional testing so as uh, the uh, word is explaining in this we will be not testing the behavior of the application 
or uh, the action or a particular requirement so we are not testing to that thing but we will be testing some other aspects from respect to the application like uh, what is the response in that how the application is working it is working smoothly or not can the application uh, no uh, take the heavy load or not so if we are doing that kind of a testing for our application or of our system so in that case we call it as a non functional testing so how well the system perform is non functional testing so non functional testing refers to various aspects such as like performance load stress scalability security compatibility testing so the main focus is to improve the user experience on how fast the system responds to the request so in our automation we automate the functional as well as the non functional testing so mainly the functional testing we automate is our ui and the api testing and the non functional we do uh, like j with the help of a j meter or a load runner so we perform the non functional testing and in that we see like how our system is responding how uh, if we are sending hundred or thousands of a connection at the same time what is the response time that we are getting from the application so in that way we are doing our non-functional testing with our some automation tools so in this training we will be more talking about the functional testing how we do perform the ui automation with the help of a selenium and web driver so the next one is the software testing life cycle so if there is a process in our testing so and it uh, it consists of the different uh, steps so that we call it as a life cycle so like there is a software development life cycle so in the similar way we also have the software testing life cycle so software testing life cycle is a sequence of a different activities that is performed during the software testing process because uh, development is a different process testing is a different process but testing is a part of the development so first of all we will be talking about the software development life cycle so if we see i have shown you stlc versus stlc both are consisting of the similar phases only but the task that we are performing in that particular phase of the cycle will be the different will be related to that particular activity like if i'm doing the testing life cycle if i'm talking about testing life cycle so the task will be in involved in that particular phase will be related to the testing if it is related to the development then it will be uh, related to the development of the particular requirement activity so stlc is a fundamental part of the software development life cycle but SDLC consists of only the testing phases. So if you see this diagram, the SDLC versus STLC. In STLC, first of all, there is will be the like requirement gathering will be there. We have all the BA and the scrum masters will be there and they do the some requirement analysis from the club with the help of a client. And after that, there will be the analysis part will be there. Like once we have gathered all the requirement, do the some kind of a analysis that what could be achieved, what could not be achieved, how much time it will take. All such kind of a analysis will be done there. After we done all the such uh, analysis, we do the designing part of our development activities, how it will be designed, how it will be you know, enhanced in our framework for our uh, development framework. So once all will be done, then the individual programmer is there then who will be start working on the assigned requirement. He will do the coding, he will do the unit testing as well. So once the unit testing will be done, it will hand over to the testing team. So this is our testing phase is there. So testing phase will be there and the testers will execute all the positive and negative scenarios will be finding on the bugs and the cycle will be rotate here in the software development life cycle so after if everything is tested of all the requirements it will go in the deployment in our different environments and the live uh, live production environment so this is about the sdlc and now we are talking about the stlc that is our testing phase inside our stlc so if we see about the uh, perspective of our STLC, so there also, first of all, it will happen the requirement analysis. 
so we will be analyzing like what is the exact requirement is coming what can be the positive scenarios or what can be no negative scenarios or what exactly is going to be delivered for this particular requirement so that kind of analysis also will be uh, inside the testing team it will do and once it will do then particular assigned requirement that tester will start designing the uh, test planning for that he will see like what are the positive scenarios negative scenarios he will do test plan he will do test case writing test matrix is required or test data is required so all kind of things he will do in test planning then test design is there he will design the test cases after that he will do the environment setup like if there is different environments for particular product so in that case he will be ready with the different test data or user credentials and other things and he will do an, uh, he will do the environment setup there if everything is there and ready for that he will start executing the test cases for that particular requirement in the test execution phase and the cycle will rotate here in the test execution if he finds some bug in the test execution then again he will report to the developer and he will raise a defect for that and then again it will be assigned to the developer and he will do some in the coding we will do some refinement in the to uh, resolve the defect and then again it will be assigned back to the tester so everything is work fine so then in the testing phase he will do the test closer and he will close the testing activity in that so it is all involved around the testing activity it is all around the development activity so this is about the software testing life cycle and if we talk about the bug life cycle so this again uh, sometimes they ask in interviews so about the bug life cycle what is the bug life cycle is there and it's like a common practice if we see for an every kind of application we follow similar kind of a cycle only but only the sometimes they change the label or environment wise they change it but the otherwise the process is the same across all the multiple projects and company so the defect is a simply a flow of an or error in application that is restricting the normal flow of an application by mismatching the expected behavior of an application with the actual one so it is also called as a defect or a bug or a issue so different names is given so you can call it any name it has a bug defect or a issue <coughs> So it is the journey of a defect cycle. So this goes through the different phases in the lifetime. So like whenever the tester is uh, testing the particular test case and if he finds that the expected behavior is different than the actual one. So in that case, he will be raising a particular defect or error. So first of all, whenever he is raising by entering all the steps, like how we can reproduce it, what is the environment that is there, what credentials he has used or some priority or severity also he will give for that particular bug and then once he is raising so the status will be the new for that and after that he will assign it to the respective developer who has developed that particular requirement so it will be get assigned to the developer and then developer will open that particular defect to start working on it so if uh, he is opening that defect so the status will go in the open state and after fixing it suppose he has worked on that particular defect and he has fixed it so then he will again uh, he will set the status to fixed and then it will go in the retest phase and he will uh, sign it back to the tester who has raised that particular defect then again tester will retest that particular defect and if he if he finds that uh, still it is not fixed so in that case he can reopen it again and he can again assign it back to the same developer and in that particular open state when the uh, like uh, developer is checking that particular bug and if, if he finds that this is not a uh, this is like an invalid bug so in that case he can reject it or defer to that particular bug as well in that case directly we close that bug.
so in this way this cycle will rotate and finally if uh, in the retesting phase if the test case has been fixed and it is working fine as from the end point of a view so in that case uh, the tester will verify it and will finally close that particular bug and the status will be closed status in there so this is the normal flow that happens for a particular bug Any any doubt anyone is having till here because next we will start for the automation testing. This is just I have given the brief introduction about software testing, like what what are the different things are there for our software. Anyone have any doubt? okay let's start so this is we have given about some basic introductions about the software testing now this is more about the automation testing what is this so as i have explained the automation testing or automation is the same process to automate the manual process so this is i'm saying because sometimes even if we are writing the test cases in automation so we think some things is happening automatically but i want to say every action that you are performing manually in your test case the same action you has to perform with the help of a automation script only then it will be achievable for the automation because sometimes we think like this uh, is the way for the uh, manual process but same we have to approach in our automation as well if we're clicking on a particular text box in the manual so in the similar way while writing the test case for the automation we also has to click on that particular text box to perform the same action if you're clicking uh, or if you're selecting any value in the manual uh, test step so the same we have to automate in our uh, automation script as well to perform the same action so automation is the same exact process of automating the manual steps so here we are talking about the software testing so definitely we will be automating the software testing steps that we are doing in our manual way so automation testing is the method of testing the software products with special tools here we will be using the tools to automate it because we are not going to do it manually so in that way we have to use some tools that will help us to automate our test cases and the framework to minimize the human intervention and the maximizes the quality so automation testing is software testing technique that performs using automated testing automation tools to execute a test case suite it is more acceptable way to enhance the efficiency it will increase the productivity and we can even do the more test coverage of our software testing as well Automation testing is done with the help of automation software and it controls the flow of the execution of test as per the written test scripts. Like I'm saying, if it will be happening in the sequence steps, whatever you have written in that particular line of a code, the same will be happening in that particular execution as well. So why the automation testing is required? So software testing automation is required to increase the effectiveness to increase the test coverage because manually we can't cover every test case or most of the test cases if we need to execute the regression five times in one of the sprint so if we do that manually so that you know that's a like very hectic uh, for the manual testers as well but with the help of the automation we can even run 10 time in one of the same we can run our automation test cases and suit in the night time or we can run in holidays we can run on weekend also with the auto schedule so in that case we can achieve and we can cover the more test cases as well execution speed will be fast there in the automation because we already know what test data has to enter it is already configured we don't have to again see our actual sheet or test data what has to be entered there it all has been already entered in our script and all will be execution speed will be fast as uh, your uh, for your system configuration automated testing software is important like uh, manual testing of all the workflows all failed negative scenarios if we are doing it's time and money consuming right because manually if you will do it will take lots of a time and for a client time is a money because if he because he is paying 
for the time that was pending for that particular project. So in that way, if you want to save the money, so we have to save the time. And if you want to save the time, you have to automate the test cases. And uh, so ultimately, you will be saving the money as well. In that. So test automation in software testing does not require human intervention. You can run automated test cases over the uh, night as well. So you don't have to be uh, work on the uh, no, working hours only. You can even work, uh, it can be executed even in the night time as well. Test automation increases the speed of test execution because if you see manually, you will be entering the one field value, selecting the drop down value. And if you will see with respect to the automation, it will be very fast. Right. So in that way, it will be speed the execution for if you manually, if you, uh, some activity for uh, executing the test cases for like 100 test cases, it's taking two hour, hours of a time If the same you will automate. Maybe in one hour only you can complete the execution for 100 of a test cases. And it helps in increase the test coverage. So in that case, you can cover more positive and negative scenarios and you can uh, build uh, the uh, regression suit. So that will be help helpful for you to test each and every functionality in your application. It improves the product quality because if uh, you have automated the test cases once you don't have to remember anything any functionality you don't have to remember because you have uh, written the script in such a way that it, it will be work always with a good quality there will be no error uh, basically in the script uh, because of that the defects we can miss right so it will increase the product quality for us that's why we need some automation testing to retest or to re-execute to save the time so multiple things are there we need the automation testing for that advantages of automation testing there are multiple advantages like the reusability so we can reuse the test script in automation testing if uh, suppose we have written a framework we have written some 10 to 15 test cases and we have written the some business methods as well for the test cases and tomorrow we have to write down some more positive negative scenarios so in that case we can reuse the already created functions as well we don't have to spend more time to write uh, more number of a test cases so easily we can write down uh, multiple test cases we can recreate the steps which are de uh, detailed as the earlier ones it will be consistent so definitely as compared to the manual testing automation testing is more consistent and way faster than executing the regular test a running test anytime so we can run uh, the test cases anytime like 24 by 7 there is no not like the manual that uh, you will work one or two hours definitely you need some rest for that but in automation it is not like that you can run continuously you can run the automation test cases early bug detection if we want if we want to find out the bugs early in our application so for that basically we uh, automate the regression suit and if the regression suit if you want to run manually uh, it will take even two days as well like two three three days for a tester to complete the regression and if uh, there is a requirement you have to run multiple time because code drop happens weekly also sometimes in the sprint and in that case if you want to run the regression so you will all be busy in running the regression only when you will be test the actual functionality so in that case you can uh, automate the regression suit that is uh, basically containing all the positive and negative scenarios for your every functionality of the application and you can easily overnight day and night you can run and you can easily deduct the bug in your application before any code drop happens or after the code drop happens you can early detect the bug which is impacting some other uh, areas of your application there is less human resources required right in manually uh, there, there can be requirement of a two to three testers but in automation we can reuse the fun uh, business method we can run in the overnight we can schedule the execution so in that case we need even less human resources for our application and it will help to save the cost for, for a particular project for the client and it will be speeding up the testing life cycle because we will be able to achieve and we will be able to complete the testing within the time frame or even before the time frame and so in that case we will be speeding up our, our testing life cycle 
so these are some advantages of our automation testing so where basically we use our automation testing so in multiple areas for multiple testing we use uh, the automation testing like our functional testing we use it and for smoke testing so if we want to create a, some small bed for uh, uh, containing just only the end-to-end -end scenarios for our test cases so in that case we can create a smoke testing suit so that will help us to execute the test cases if we want to create the regression suit which is containing all the positive and small uh, test cases so in that case we can use it for the regression testing as well and if uh, there is a requirement in the project that we want to create a multiple test data in our application so in that case we can use the automation test cases because that will be that can be execute n number of a times and we can create the data as well with the help of a automation testing automation test cases so there it will be helpful and useful for us if you want to do the build deployment verification because sometimes is there uh, that continuous integration team is there so basically the Dev, uh, devops team is there they do the call drop in particular environment and they have to check that uh, build is successfully deployed or not because sometimes if we see uh, whenever we start or open the application uh, we face the server error in that like slash and server error in our application we are not able to launch the application so that kind of a validation if we are doing that we call it as a build deployment verification so in that case we can automate one of the main flow test case and immediately after the deployment we can schedule even that test case to be executed once the deployment is happening and uh, if that will pass so in that case we can uh, achieve the build deployment verification as well we can it will be useful there as well for us now like if we decided so which test case we should be automate <clears throat> so first of all like if the uh, high risk are there which is critical to our business because everything is about the business from the end users so like if any e-commerce website we should be able to perform the complete order for our uh, e-commerce product so in that case uh, which are very high critical as respect to our businesses so those test cases definitely we should automate because we need to execute those test cases multiple times or maybe we can say every time we have to execute those test cases those should not be impacted because if that is impacted it will be a loss for us or it will be a loss for the client so those high risk or business critical test cases we should automate and the test cases which are repeatedly required to execute suppose there is a, some uh, profile section is there and we have to execute every time payment section is there that has to be executed every time it should be working every time fine so every uh, there are different uh, ways to do the payment so we should automate all the test cases related to the all payment methods and that have we have to execute every time so in that case so we uh, which test cases are getting repeatedly executed so those test cases we should automate and we can add those test cases in our regression testing suit the test cases that are very tedious or difficult to perform manually suppose there are some calculations that are happening manually to calculate some value and then you have to put the validation there so in that case you can automate the test cases with the help of a script and you can write down the same kind of a logic or calculation in any of the language and you don't have to remember that particular logic or calculation how it will be performing so you have to write down only once and the same uh, will be executed with the same consistency every time so this test cases you should automate which uh, because manually if you will perform those tests because you have to again if you don't remember the calculation or if you do the mistake in that so definitely it will not be the helpful so, and it will be the time consuming activity as well so those test cases you should automate and the test cases is that high time consuming manually so that uh, you can automate those particular test cases as well the next one is like which test cases not to automate the test cases which are newly designed 
and not executed manually at least one so those test cases we should not automate because uh, those requirement or those particular scenarios are still not stable so in that case if we automate those scenarios maybe again if there is will be some changes so in that case we again we have to redesign our automation test cases so those test cases we should not automate which is just newly designed uh, uh, or maybe is not even executed manually so we should not automate those test cases and the test cases for uh, them the requirement is uh, frequently is changing and that is not the stable environment or that is not a stable requirement so in that case we should not automate that case uh, the reason is same you have to again redesign your automation test cases maybe you have to change the locators every time or you have to change the dynamic experts or dynamic locators for that every time so that is not possible for you even to you know uh, change or redesign your automation test cases before the execution so test cases which are executed on ad hoc basis so that you should not automate any anyone have doubt till here supriya vanella any doubt so so far uh, uh, i don't have any doubt uh, uh, so i just have one question right so yeah. these uh, slides right so will these be uploaded on the some drive share yes, drive yes yes i will be sharing all the materials with the you have given okay yeah that that's fine yeah. so yeah so so far uh, uh, it's all clear yeah so i guess it's basic right now yes uh, yes okay. it's all the basic yeah. i am explaining so that we can you know in be in the mode of the software testing and automation yeah i guess once java starts right then uh, i guess i'll have doubts yeah. but right yeah, now yeah. Okay. okay no doubts to my side too. yeah thanks thanks man. yeah uh, actually i have one doubt yes yes sir uh, uh, actually the the basic confusion i mean across even in the interviews when they ask that is difference between error bug failure and defect so uh, like uh, at what stages are these uh, detected and by whom like uh, uh, if developer finds any uh, something is wrong in the code hmm. uh, while they are doing unit testing so what term do they coin is it a defect error or bug uh, they call it as a error itself because they uh, they have done while doing that particular auto, uh, particular development and they have found at the same point so if programmer is doing any error or mistake and if he finds that he he will not even create a defect for that if you will see whenever developer is doing the unit testing he will not create a defect for that he will resolve by himself uh, at the same time uh, while it's doing the unit testing and he will fix it because he know he is finding the mistake or he is finding the error in his his code itself only and if if that particular error he has missed and if that particular error will go in the testing phase for us and if a tester will find that particular error or the mistake the developer has done so in that case we will raise a defect for that we call it as a defect so tester will detect the defect and then developer will fix that particular default or you case fault or a defect then developer will fix it if even tester is not able to find out that particular defect and if he will go in the live suppose in the production it has gone and it is failing some uh, failure for us right it is causing some wrong results in the live production so we call it as a failure and in that case if even, even there are some production team are there uh, where we raise some such kind of a defect in our live production and there is a production support is there for that and they again uh, create a defect for that particular failure and again it will come back to the you no know, in the developer and developer will fix it and the same cycle will go on oh uh, okay okay yeah i understood uh, yes so the next one this is the uh, 
So next one is about the automation testing lifecycle. So as uh, we are having the software testing lifecycle or software development lifecycle. So in the similar way, we are also having the automation testing lifecycle because it's also a process for, for our automation phases uh, like start to end. We also have to do some analysis that which test cases we can automate or which uh, which are out of a scope for the automation. So in that way, it is also having our uh, process. So complete process. So there are six phases in automation testing life cycle, uh, like uh, determining the scope of the test automation that uh, which test case uh, we have to automate or which test case we don't have to automate. And once suppose that is finalized for us, we have to select some right tool for our automation that uh, because every application is having the different requirement or different scenarios or you can say different test GML DOM with with them we have to interact basically on the element interaction is there different element interaction some is using the angular JS some is using the JavaScript or some other languages or HTMLs. So we have to see like uh, which tool is best for us that uh, we can meet the requirement for our automation. There are hundreds of uh, tools nowadays in market, Selenium, QTP, Catalon Studio, or some other tools are there. Test Magic is there, PowerShell is there. So we have to see which tool is fitting best for our requirement matching for our automation. Because, like client requires this kind of automation and we should be able to achieve that uh, particular automation with which tool so once we are deciding uh, so in that case we do some poc also they are like proof of a concept that with this particular tool we are able to achieve we are able to interact with all the elements or we are able to complete the flow so we do some kind of a poc and we show it to the client as well or in the team as well to managers and if we are fine with that, client is fine then. So we select that particular automation tool and finalize that. So once that is done, we do the some planning or our automation framework design, how we should design, what the other external libraries we have to include and all that. So that will be happening in that phase. We will do some test environment setup, some different uh, URLs, credentials, how we will do, how we will maximize the productivity from this framework how we can use the same uh, for the multiple environments or for multiple credentials so all kind of uh, these things will be there and we will do some tests uh, set up with there and finally there will be the like test case development we have to write down our test cases related to the requirement and we do the execution as well whenever there is a requirement of execution for the smoke or sanity or regression or data creation so, so we do the executions there and if we find anything uh, defect or a bug there definitely there is again bug life cycle is similar to for us as well so we create the bugs and it will be rotate and complete the bug life cycle once everything is done and also we will share the test analysis and reporting we do for the automation like how many test cases has been passed this time how many failed how many bugs are, are reported because in testing everyone more focus about the bugs only like how many bugs whenever a manager ask you when the status they will ask you like how many bugs we have found for this particular sprint or for this particular mvp so in the last for a tester it is all about the bugs only so and so the same kind of reporting we do and to the manager and to the client as well so this is what the automation testing it is consist of and there are some different type of automation framework are there that uh, we use so like uh, linear automation test framework is there where we simply write down uh, every individual test case in the uh, separate file and maybe some record and uh, playback framework uh, if you do like there are some plugins is there with the help of that we can just uh, record and play uh, our all the automated script so if we do that in different files so that we call it as some linear automation test framework modular based like if we are having uh, different models for our application if and if you're designing all the multiple locators or all the business logic or the test cases in the separate modules wise in the separate files or in the uh, we divide it as a group a group we call it as a module or a package 
if we are creating in such a way modular way so we call it as a module per based testing framework data driven testing framework is there if we are separating our test data from the business logic so in that case we call it as a data driven because we can use the multiple data or we can use the different data for our application or for our test cases to test it so in that case we call it as a data driven testing framework keyword driven is also similar to the data driven only but uh, there we generate the keywords uh, keywords and uh, the methods for that in the keyword driven and hybrid is basically if we are combining more than one uh, framework we call it as a hybrid uh, test data framework and there are some de uh, design patterns are also there like uh, one of the famous one is the page object model design so we include the page object model design in our framework as well so that is basically to design or to divide your um, multiple locators or different locators related to the page so in the one of the page we will be adding all the uh, locators related to the that page only so we will be dividing in such a way so that we can use or reuse in multiple uh, test cases for the same there are multiple different tools in market for the automation like if you are doing the ui functional testing or non functional testing there are multiple tools are there for that and it's like a free source tools are also there and the licensed tools are also there it's all we select based on the client requirement if client is ready to pay for the tool so in that case uh, we can select the paid tool as well because paid tool is having the different advantages and if client is not ready to pay for the tools that we are going to use to automate so in that case we can select the free source tool as well and free source tools is having some limitations like we don't get the uh, that kind of a spot there if it's stuck somewhere so we have to reach to the free source community that uh, we can find some solution for that but if it is a paid one definitely some one team is aligned to you that will help for, for you that will give the support to you for your problem so it will be like this and uh, if you see like selenium is there that we use for our uh, web applications apm is there that we use for the mobile web or apk uh, our applications native applications qtp is there qtp is also used for the functional testing ui functional testing but uh, it is having some different advantages advantages and it is a paid tool as well and uh, we can like it is we can't use this qtp for multiple languages it only supports vb script so multiple things are there and telerik studio is a different uh, tool is there catalan studio is paid tool it provides a good ui it provides you already all the build methods and easily like if any manual tester is there who want to write down the test case so easily he will be able to write down the test cases in the catalan studio it don't uh, need uh, that much knowledge of the programming and the framework because framework will also be created there report will also be auto generated the methods will already there you just you have to drag and drop and uh, write down the test cases like that happily tools is there if you want some kind of a visual testing so in that case you can use the happily tools for the performance testing if you are looking for free source you can like use the jmeter uh, load runner is a paid tool is there it provides some different advantages soap ui so if you want to do the abi testing you can use the soap ui in automation you can use rest assured test magic is a new tool in the market that provides uh, uh, that use some internal ai based technology as in, and it provides uh, the complete automation for you where you can do the functional non functional api mainframe database every kind of a testing you can do on the single platform so multiple tools are there and here we will be talking about the selenium web driver so it's a free source tool for us and easily we can use it there are some differences between selenium and qtp and this also or sometimes they ask in interviews like uh, what are the difference between selenium and qtp if you talk uh, these are some features that i have written here and these are the properties with respect to the features for selenium and qtp 
like license if we see it's an open source it's a licensed one software what type of software it is it is a set of apis because it includes the different apis and it will having the different packages inside the packages we will be having the classes and interface that that we are using to write down our test cases so it is a set of apis and if we talk about qtp it provides it some kind of a desktop applications to use it flexibility we can run across all the browsers it supports like only not it don't provide all the browsers actually it is down there it only uh, supports the specific versions of a Google Chrome, Mozilla, and Internet Explorer. Object repository does not have any such repository. We have to create with the help of a uh, like page object model design. So we have to use that to create some object repositories there. It comes with built-in repository. It supports Android, iOS, Windows, Linux, Mac, every uh, environment. It supports every Windows or uh, sorry, every operating system. It supports. But QTP only supports the Windows. You can't run the same scripts on the Linux system or some Mac OS system. Programming language, it supports multiple languages. It only supports for VB script. If we see about the support, suppose if you face any issue, so you have to use the same Selenium community forms. But in the case of a QTP, you will be having one dedicated SP support team that you can take the help from that if you're stuck somewhere. It only supports for the web-based application, but in case of a QTP, it uh, helps for desktop application as well as for the web application. These are the some supported browsers are there, and uh, in IDE basis, uh, Selenium provides you like uh, we can uh, use Eclipse, NetBeans, .NET. Based on the language that you are using, you can select the IDE for that. If you are using a Python for python with selenium in that case you can use the pycharm id uh, for that but in case of a qtp it provides uh, the specific qtp developed id for you to use it test report generation you have to use some external test report like uh, some uh, allure report or some extent report for that but in case of a qtp it provides basically all the uh, paid tools will provide such kind of features to build the object repository to create the basic framework structure to provide you the reports all this kind of a basic uh, paid tools definitely provides you parameterization you have to rely on one of the support and programming language for the parameterization like if you want to run the same test case same business methods or multi with the multiple test data so we can do that with the help of any programming language but in the qtp it it provides you the built-in uh, features for that any have doubt for this no okay then maybe we can start uh, So the next thing is uh, in our uh, course that we will see how the first step for the, our Selenium web driver with Java, we have to install the Java and the Eclipse in our system to start it. So how we can install the Java and Eclipse? First of all, for to install the Java in your system, you have to install the JDK in your system so jdk is including all the basic things for you like uh, the compiler java compiler or the runtime environment or the jvm or uh, some other documentation or some other tools or libraries so everything will be there inside the jdk so if you install this jdk it means we are installing the java in your system and once you are installing the jdk in the system you have to set some environment variables to in your system for that <clears throat> so if you want to install jdk in your system there are two ways that you can do as you know there will be some dot exe file is there that uh, you can install in your system and also there is some zip folder is also there where, where you can uh, just do the unzip of the folder and you can give the and you can set the environment variable path for that <coughs> <coughs> where we do we need this job folder so basically i will give an example like we have to use some open jdk if you are working on some aws machine 
and where we have to uh, suppose we want to set up some jenkins or some other steps to auto schedule and there we get some security or restrictions like we can't use a dot exe file because they don't allow us to install the dot exe file in aws machine so in that case what we do we download the some open jdk there and uh, because it's a zip folder will be there so in that case you don't have to install it just you have to unzip it and you have to give in the system variables so in that case mostly because of some securities in some of the system we use the open jdk in our projects or in our applications so how you can do with the help of a dot exe file so just you have to search on google, uh, google like java jdk download you will be uh, once you will search that you have to open this url oracle.com java because java is a product of oracle now earlier the java was the product for the microsystem now it is a product of a oracle so just you have to open this So once you open this URL, you will see the multiple uh, versions are there for the Java, like Java 19, 17, or earlier releases also you can go. So I will recommend to install either Java 70 or Java 11 in your system because once you will be start working on the Jenkins thing, so Jenkins, the prerequisite for Jenkins is you must have the Java 17 or 11 in your system. If you will install Java 19 in your system, so you will not be able to work on the Jenkins part. So Java 17 is a prerequisite for that Jenkins. So I will recommend if you want, you can install the Java 17 in your system. And if you see it is uh, if you want to install it for the multiple operating systems suppose Linux or Mac or for Windows so it provides you uh, this particular uh, different versions for the same so here you can see you can download the uh, zip file or you can download the .exe file as well and you can install it based on your operating system like 32 bit or a 64 bit suppose if you want to download for the .exe simply you have to click on this link and it will start downloading for you i have already installed in my system and uh, it's already downloaded as well somewhere like this is the jdk so once you will complete the download now so you will uh, get like this you have to double click on this file click on a yes actually i have already installed in my system so i will not install it again but every steps i have mentioned with the screenshot in the document so i will give you this document as well just you have to click on in next and this is the path is there so by default it will install in the program files java jdk but if there is some security features or some security is there in a system if you want to don't want to install in c drive and in some other drive you want to install you can change it from here you can select some other drive and you can uh, install in some different uh, folder or drive as well so once you select that you can click on a next and it will start installing uh, this particular java version in your system and you don't have to do anything in the last it will show you the finish only just you need to click on the finish button so here i have mentioned all the steps with the screenshot like you have to click on the next then you can select the path or if you want to change the path you can change the path or otherwise you can click on the next here once it all will be done so it will show you the screenshot like this it is successfully installed like this you can see it is showing like this so successfully installed just click on a close button once you will click on a close button so jdk will be installed in your system now it will be the time to set the path in your system so for that what you have to do in the search bar you can search like edit environment variables for your account once you will open this one second i need to open So 
so once you will open this you have to click on the environment variables under the system variables what you can do you can uh, write down java underscore home and you can give the path of your installation till the jdk folder and one more thing you have to set inside the path in the path you have to gain the path till the bin bin folder like this so you will go to program files java jdk 17 and bin because this bin folder is containing all the uh, libraries inside that like for your java c compiler runtime jvm or other java libraries all are there inside the bin folder so we are setting the path so that our operating system whenever we are running our test cases or our java code so in that case our operating system should know from where you have to pick the java compiler from where you have to pick the java environment runtime environment to execute the java code so that's why we mentioned the environment variables in uh, so that uh, directly operating system can understand and can take the path from here to interact with so this is how you have to mention in the environment variables once you will do that so all the steps i have mentioned here how you have to do you have to edit it so it will be set for you if you want to install with the help of a zip folder so what you have to do you can search with open jdk download and you will get this particular website so once you will open this website there will be the download option is there so you can download based on your operating system and uh, 32 bit or a 64 bit you can download this open jdk from here like linux uh, windows or mac so you can download this zip folder it is open jdk will not come in the dot exe it will be always in the zip file so you can download this and after download just you have to unzip and you can put in any folder or in any drive so once you do that so again just you have to set the path in the system variables like if i have done in downloads so open jdk so you have to set the path in the bin folder in the inside that also you will find the bin bin folder in open jdk like this is open jdk and here also you will find this bin folder and this bin folder is there you can see this java c java c is basically java compiler this java we use for the run for the running of the test cases like applet viewer this is mainly like used for the developers to develop any applet uh, kind of application so all the libraries will be there inside this so the same we have to refer in our system environment variables to use it so this is the configuration that you have to do to install the java in a system so once you will install the java what you can do you can open the command prompt so after opening the command prompt you can write down the command to check the version that is installed in your system so you can write down java space hyphen version so once you will write uh, enter this command it will give you that java version 18 point this something is installed in your system okay <clears throat> this is how you can verify that java is installed in your system or not once you will install the java in your system next step is like if we are going to automate our test cases with the help of a java so definitely we need a id that supports the java so in that case we can use either eclipse netbeans there so we, if we want to install the eclipse so there are two ways as well for the eclipses you can either use the .exe file to install the eclipse in your system or you can download the zip folder and uh, simply you can unzip it and start using it there will be no other configurations to do that to start using the eclipse for you so if you want to install with the help of a exe file so you have to search eclipse download in the google and this link will be opened so once let's open this url so here you can see after opening this url here is a download option so if you will click on this download it will download the .exe file for you 
okay but uh, if uh, you don't want to install with .exe if you, you want with some zip folder you have to go to this download packages suppose if you want to install with the uh, .exe so i mentioned all the steps after downloading it like this is the button to download the .exe file you will open it once you will open it will open this particular prompt for you that uh, which different eclipse id you want to install in your system you can install eclipse id for java developers or this enterprise or what kind of a java id that you want to install and once you select it you can just click on install like this you can give the path where you want to install it and accept all the conditions for that and once you will do that it will be installed you have to click on a launch button of the eclipse and this will be open for you and this is the uh, where uh, you want to store the project suppose you are creating one project in your eclipse so it will be getting stored some in some folder for you in your system so you can give the by default path where you want to store all the created project inside your eclipse suppose, so this we called it as a workspace suppose i have given this workspace so whenever I will be creating a new project in my Eclipse, so by default that project will store inside this Eclipse workspace for me. So this is the one option that you can install the Eclipse and another way is if you want to install, if you don't want to directly install, but just you want is some folder for your Eclipse. So in that case you can download, you can you have to click on download packages and based on that you have to select the uh, package 32 bit or a 64 bit so it will show you the similar kind of interface uh, where you can install the different eclipse id for uh, the different operating system so i will recommend to download eclipse id for the eclipse committer and if you are using the windows you can install you can have to click on windows on this 64 bit so once you will click on this a complete folder will be downloaded you have to unzip it you can put in any of the drive or any of the folder and after that you have to launch the eclipse icon will be there you have to launch it and in the similar way you have it will prompt you that which workspace you want just you can select the workspace and you can click on a launch and eclipse id will be launched for you so i will recommend to use the zip and unzip folder here because sometimes uh, this is dot exe may be not uh, they don't allow you to install it even so if even you face any error in your eclipse so simply you can unzip the again another again and you can start using it so here you have to click on the download packages once you will click on this download packages it will open all the different eclipse ids are there available for you so these all are different eclipse ids are available and based on the operating system you can just click on this particular link to download it so all are there and i am using this uh, eclipse commenter and i will recommend this one only so it is a good so for windows you have to click on this one once you will click on this it will start downloading for you click on this download okay so it will start the downloading for you i have already downloaded so it will download the complete package eclipse package for you okay so suppose i have downloaded in my software so like like this it will be shown to you eclipse commenter id so you have to do the unzip simply do extract all once you will do the extract all it, it will be like this so eclipse commenter open this you will see this eclipse application there just double click on it and it will launch the eclipse in a system you don't have to do any configuration or you don't have to install it so it will show you this one prompt that where you want to store the particular project so i have given eclipse workspace just click on a launch and the eclipse will be launched in a system and you are ready to use it no any other configurations no installation for this eclipse you have to do so this is about the installation part for java and eclipse in a system so anyone have doubt in that 
no i'm not till okay but i will say uh, please you can install everyone can install it and maybe uh, you can start practicing once i will be showing the different concepts about selenium and java okay so once this is done next thing we can see is uh, so this uh, i think uh, this one we have done setup next one is about the selenium web driver we will start with some selenium web driver concept Suppose once we have done our all the we are ready with our scripts to be done or to be tested. So <clears throat> first we will see uh, some something about the Selenium web driver. What is Selenium web driver, or why do we know we need to use it? What are advantages? Disadvantages? What is the internal architecture of our Selenium web driver? What are the components of a Selenium web driver? So all these features we will see. And then we will jump into the creating the project or creating the Maven project, creating the packages and all that. And some different concept we will see about the Selenium web driver, how we can interact with our application. So this is introduction to Selenium web driver is an open source and it is a collection of APIs. So which is used for testing the web application, right? So this is testing the web application and the functional testing. So that you can achieve with the help of a Selenium web driver. Easily you can uh, find out the Selenium web driver library and you can integrate it with your application and you can start using the Selenium. So it is not a paid tool, it's a free source only. And the Selenium web driver tool is used for automating the web application testing to verify that it works as expected or not. So same like the functional testing that we have explained. And it mainly supports like browser firefox chrome safari and internet explorer but internet explorer i will say it is uh, not uh, getting used so is is getting basically used for that right so is this browser is getting used for that now and is browser is also internally using the chromium only so if you will see chrome basically internally use the chromium chromium uh, driver exe file so is also use the chromium only <clears throat> so if that same test case you are running on a chrome the same test case you will be able to execute in the as browser as well <clears throat> you can face some issue in the firefox or a safari for some of the locators or some of the execution wise but chrome and is uh, definitely if in one browser it is working in other also it will work smoothly for you it also permits you to execute the cross browser testing so same test case we can execute in multiple browsers and we can test the application is working fine or not in the different browser as well because if there is an e-commerce e project suppose there is a flight uh, uh, flight booking or traveling domain is there so in that case uh, so, uh, we see like our application is properly looking or working fine in different browser or different versions of the browser or not so in that case we need to require to execute the test cases in multiple browsers or some specific versions of the browsers because those kind of applications get used across the globe and uh, in different countries uh, like most countries prefer to use the ace browser like i they mostly prefer to use not the chrome so but in somewhere chrome is mostly used so they have to see that our uh, a business should not be impacted and it should be getting used everywhere properly with smooth so in that case they require the cross browser testing as well so in that way we can use and we can achieve that with the help of a selenium web driver web driver also enables you to use a programming language to creating your scripts so we can use the different language so like if any tester is there he is a master in the java but he don't know the python or dot net language or someone is master in dot net as per the knowledge or skills so we can use any of the language to automate and uh, we can uh, use it you know uh, in the smooth way so it uh, the web driver directly talks to the browser so web driver will directly interact with your web browser element and it supports multiple languages like c sharp java Perl, php python and ruby so any of the language you can use and uh, selenium will provide you the specific language uh, client library so that you can start using it for that particular language 
and if you are using some different language so the uh, id that is getting spot uh, by that language so you can use that particular id to develop your test cases so there are some advantages and disadvantages of selenium webdriver because every tools have some advantage and disadvantages so advantage if we see like it is an open source we don't have to pay any money for to start using the selenium web driver but if we are going with some qtp cat alone we have to pay for that if we want to use it so it's a lifetime open source we can use it and compatibility it uh, we can use it across the multiple browsers and also it supports the multiple languages like we have seen c sharp uh, java python Perl, and we can create the framework related to that language we can also use the selenium web driver on a multiple operating system we can use on a mac or linux or a windows so we can use that and it's uh, <clears throat> we, if you want to do the multiple device tracing that also we can do it provides you the parallel test execution as well suppose if you want to run 10 test cases at the same time in multiple browser or some different browser instances so that if you want to speed up the test execution because if you will do the manually you can only perform one test case at a time but i want to save more time i have a lots of a test cases but i have to complete it so in that case you can achieve the parallel test execution as well because it's a machine whatever the specification you will give to the machine it will perform so you can give uh, the specifications to execute the test cases in parallel mode so 10 test cases or 5 test cases you can run parallelly and you can save a lots of a time so like if one test case is 10 test cases was taking 10 minute if you will uh, run 10 test cases in parallelly so one minute it will take to complete all the test cases you can save a lots of a time from that and selenium uses only few resources uh, hardware resources like it it is not like you need some 16 gb only or some specific ram or operating system to use uh, with small uh, hardware resources also you can use the selenium and it supports headless browser execution as well so in the headless browser execution you will not be able to see the browser but still the execution uh, is happening inside your browser so that kind of execution we will see in the jenkins like how we do some headless browser execution as well but there are some advantages of the selenium web driver like uh, uh, image if you, there is a requirement for the image testing we can't perform the image testing with the help of a selenium web driver if we want to do the visual testing that we want to see our uh, this page is there suppose this page is there i want to see this page should be look similar or like if project is displaying at this particular position it should be displayed at the same position in every other browser as well it should not be like it should break somewhere so if you want to do some kind of a visual testing so that is not possible with the help of a selenium web driver if you want to do the captcha automation we can't automate the captcha with the help of a selenium web driver if you want to uh, perform some uh, document validation or verification that also we can't perform with the help of a selenium web driver but we can use some third party tool or library is there in the market that we can use but selenium will directly not provide you such kind of a methods to do such kind of automation and selenium is don't having any customer sports capability because it's an open source so you have to skills yourself or you have to capable of searching your problems on the google and find out the solutions by yourself on that so you will not get a dedicated team to help you out from your problems and it only supports the web application suppose i want to automate the desktop application so in that case i will not be able to use the selenium web driver for that so there are there are some disadvantages as well but mostly if we see uh, if we are uh, happy with the advantages and it we are able to achieve uh, most of the requirement from our project automations definitely we can select the selenium web driver to use it because hundred percent automation will not be achievable in any and anywhere so definitely if we are able to happy like 70 80 or 90 percent if we are able to achieve and we are able to achieve the target and we can help uh, to our, our manual team or our project we can speed up the testing life cycle 
so we can we should use the automation and send in a web driver so there are some components of the selenium web driver like first of all it has come as a selenium id has come first of all and it was a firefox plugin it was there and uh, we use it in such a way that it will record whatever the action you will perform it will record those actions and it will give you some kind of a scripts for that so you can use those scripts to automate so first selenium id has came after that the selenium rc has came but uh, selenium rc is officially has been depreciated you will not find selenium rc nowhere and uh, it is not having any support or nothing will be there no upgrade is there for selenium rc and no one use it so selenium rc was also known as the selenium one was the main selenium project for the long time before the selenium web driver came it mainly relies on the javascript for the automation and it was supported some multiple languages as well for you after the selenium rc selenium web driver has came which was uh, some mixture of the selenium rc and with the web driver so after that it has become a selenium web driver and selenium and uh, selenium rc has been depreciated so selenium web driver is a browser automation framework that accepts the commands and it will send them directly to the browser suppose if you want to click uh, if you want to click on a button so you will send the click command and directly it will interact with the browser element so this is how it will perform the selenium web driver it is implemented through a browser specific driver so like if you're working for a chrome so you have to download the chrome browser driver.exe file if you're working with Edge, so in that case you have to download the Edge driver exe file so Edge will be there to communicate between the browser and between your script so it directly communicates with the browser and will control it and selenium web driver supports multiple programming languages like java c sharp php python or Perl. so any of the language if it's good in that language you can start using with the help of a that particular language so it supports multiple languages for you and selenium grid is also there if you want to run your test cases on the multiple machines or on a multiple systems so in that case you can use the selenium grid to achieve that so selenium grid is a tool which is used together with selenium as it is used to run tests on different machines against different browsers in parallel so it helps to achieve the multiple or parallel testing as well for you in the selenium grid so mostly we will use this selenium web driver and earlier there was a selenium 2 and then came selenium 3 and now there is a version of the selenium web driver 4 as well so because it's a continuously improvement in the uh, tools so it provides new features or overcome the previous features so it improves and gives the new versions for the selenium web driver so now latest like is selenium web driver 4 is there so that we use so this is uh, some selenium web driver components i have given you some visualization like selenium selenium id was there selenium rc selenium web driver selenium grid this two has combined given you selenium 2 after that selenium 3 now there is selenium 4 as well for you and in this visual i have explained some features about the individual components like selenium id get used for firefox it is conditional operations are not supported in selenium rc so every, and these are the same features that i have explained in the last file If we see about the Selenium web driver architecture, like how the Selenium web driver internally works, how inter it interacts with our browser, how it interacts with our application elements, right? So internally also it uses the API, like if you are sending some click command, so you are sending, so it means you, you will do some post action, post command will be there, right? So post API action will happen there and it will again get the response and it will behave uh, in the similar way so selenium web driver architecture is designed to support the cross browser testing and the parallel testing so first of all what will be there suppose you are working with java or python or c sharp or .NET. so selenium will provide you the selenium 
related to that particular programming client library so if you are working with java so you will get selenium java client library if you are working with python you will get selenium python client library so what it is including it is including the compatible methods for that particular language suppose get method click method send keys method so it is containing the uh, compatible methods with your language okay now if you uh, suppose sending one command click command if you are sending so what will happen or send keys command you are uh, uh, doing some actions for the send keys so it will get convert in some gestion format uh, you are test data whatever data and send keys you are sending and it will post it will do the some post uh, api will be there so it will uh, over the http network only all the communications will happen there and this is my browser is there so it's like suppose or some, uh, chrome ies or some other browsers is there so before directly interacting with the browsers there will be the browser specific drivers as well so it will send the command to the driver suppose if i'm working on a chrome so it will send the command on the chrome driver and then command driver will send that particular command with the help of a javascript executor uh, because uh, the browsers internally works with only on the like java they use internally use the javascript executor so in that way that uh, the same command then it will send to the browser with the help of a browser driver and whatever the response will be there all the communications will happen over the http and the response whatever is coming from that particular api it will again come back to the browser driver and it will send you the response to your application so this is how the internally that selenium web driver will work with the help of a uh, browser drivers for you and is when you have doubt till here in the selenium web driver no okay because next we will be start uh, no with our creating the framework and the project so the next one we will see about set up a maven project so how we can see uh, mostly most of the time we will see as a fresh or as someone is new to the project they start creating on the java project and they start working on it and later they come to know they uh, how uh, like they want to organize the module or they organize the project and they think about what we can do and they come up to know the maven project we can use for to organize the folders and structures right so here directly we will be creating the maven projects so how you can create the maven project so in an eclipse you can create a multiple projects you can create so for that you have to go on file go on the new so java project directly you can create but you have to click on this project and it will show you that what kind of a different projects you can create because uh, java project you can create gradle project also you can create gradle is also similar to the maven only but there are some uh, different ways or syntax to import the library into your project and if you want to create the java this is simple java project you can create maven project also you can get the why do we create such kind of a maven or this uh, grader project to organize or uh, to organize our automation project or a framework and uh, to for a particular project life cycle as well because every project should be able to build the project if, if i want to build the project so how we can how i can build my project so with the help of a maven i can build my project if i want to run the test cases from the command prompt or if i want to run it remotely or in the jenkins so i i should be able to use the commands to run that so the commands if you want maven provides you such kind of a commands so that you can without opening the eclipse you should be able to run your test cases so it helps for that as well so we should create such kind of a maven or a gradle project and every we have mostly we use the maven only and in my current company also like i'm using the maven project so after that you have to click on this maven project just click on a next once you will click on a next you will see this window you don't have to do anything on that just you have to click on a next 
this location workspace location means to say the workspace location that we have selected in the starting before opening the eclipse so do you want to use that or you want to use some different location to store this project so this is for that so i have selected this checkbox so in that case i i will be using the already uh, selected workspace for me you have to click on the next after that and you have to wait for some time here so what is happening here all the archetypes will be there that will be getting download for you because this eclipse is just not getting used for the uh, for a tester only it is getting used by the developers as well to autom to develop the application as well right like if you see if you some heard about the spring is there or some mvc is there some react js application so they uh, they can select such kind of a archetype archetype and uh, based on the archetype it will give you the different folder structures or uh, such kind of a properties in your project so here we will be selecting this mvc1 blank archetype so if we are selecting that so we will be automating or creating the framework in that now here uh, this maven project once you are creating this archetype you have to give two values here so basically three values uh, it is consist of Arch maven archetype always consists of a uh, three things group id artifact id and the version so everywhere whenever i will be adding some dependency in my maven pom.xml file so it will be consisting of a uh, three properties that is archetype sorry group id art and this artifact id and the version so here you have to give the some name for your group id suppose uh, i will be giving like uh, March weekend morning batch the same name I can give in the artifact ideas okay. and with combining of the group ID and artifact ID it will create me a package for me and it will use the dot in between these two different names and this is the version is there 0.0 fn1 snapshot is there after that yes we have to click on a finish once you will click on finish it will take some time and then it will create this particular maven project for you so you can see this project is there march weekend morning batch so project will be looks like this and you can see multiple folders it has been created for you that you can use to organize your project or your framework So if we talk about first package like src main java what it contains for us in our automation framework so it basically contains all the business logic or selenium common methods or our test data reading or extend report logic so every kind of a main logic is there it will be uh, having inside our main for main package here you can create the multiple packages inside the suppose i want to create some library some utility or some page objects or some modular wise so i can create multiple packages or the multiple folders here as well so mostly we create the packages here we don't call it as a folder we create as a package inside that. and this main slash resources folder sorry this package is there here uh, it contains uh, related to the external libraries or some .exe file if we are using that is the resource to get used in our main package so, like uh, browser specific driver I want to use it so that I can use inside my I can put in my resources folder and I can start using it this test slash java contains the test cases so because test cases we don't want to integrate inside the main or main java itself only so we want to create these different packages and the different model for the test uh, package so you have to create inside here like suppose if you want to create some package uh, maybe like product so this all the test cases related to the product will will be inside inside my this package just you need to click on finish and here you can write down like new class and in this particular class suppose product example this i'm including the main so like this you can create the test cases inside this so this all the test cases whatever is related to the product i can 
add inside this product package so in the similar way i can create the multiple packages as per the modular inside my test so all the test cases will be reside in your test slash java and this test slash resources is there here mostly like we include uh, the source like which is containing all the test cases suppose product sort is there and it is containing 100 of test cases all the test cases i want to execute so i will be definitely putting in one of the test ng.xml file and that particular file i will be putting in my test less resources and this jre system library is there it is containing all the java related libraries for me so if you will expand this folder and if you will see suppose uh, some database operation so it is containing java.sql package for me this is the package and it is having all the multiple classes which are getting used to write down my test cases or my logic so all the packages which are there in java these are some libraries dot jar files inside the jar file there will be the multiple packages and inside the package there will be multiple class or it can be an interface there in that so this is containing all my java jars which are getting used for my application this maven dependencies folder it will create suppose if you want to use selenium in your application test engine in your application or uh, some extent report some apache poi some log 4j some common io files right so all that are some external or external libraries or exe files for you so if you want to use that you have to import you have to add the dependence this you can see pom.xml file this is containing the dependency that i was talking group id artifact id and the version so this thing this dependency you have to include in your pom.xml file and once you will save it all the libraries will be getting download automatically based on the version that you are specifying in your pom.xml file inside the maven dependencies so here you can see only three are there because we have created the mvc1 project so it is by default it is containing this uh, maven api jar files so all the jar files will be getting add in your maven dependencies uh, package and then you can start using it inside your test case inside your framework and this src and this target is there so it is basically getting used uh, once you will compile your code so in that case the dot class file or some other files that it will be containing in your src so we will be not adding anything in src and target folder and it will be auto refreshed or uh, something like that there and this pom.xml file we will be using to add all the dependencies here and uh, if we want to add some build life cycle for our project so that's such kind of a life cycle uh, plugins we have to add in our pom.xml file so this will be the some structure is there for our maven project anyone have any doubt in this no okay so this is the pro uh, uh, like this is the package that will be by default it will create so we don't need uh, these files so we can delete these files let me delete this okay so the next one is so this is about the maven project i have mentioned all the similar steps here what you have to do and create packages like the packages i have shown you how you can create a package this is a package also that will be getting created once you are creating your project with the combination of your group id and artifact id it will be creating one package and this is the, like one package i have created product package and inside this product package you can include all the files all the class or interface uh, related to the product itself so this is how you can create the multiple packages inside your project it's actually based on the requirement of your framework and the application you will be creating that 
so next one is the setup of a selenium web driver java client library so like i have told that uh, selenium web driver works with the multiple languages like java c sharp python so if you want to if you want to work for that particular client library so you have to download it suppose if i want to download it for, for java so you have to download for the web driver java client library so if you was working for the simple java project in that case uh, what you had to do now this is for the simple java project but no one uh, follow this approach in anywhere because you are working in a company definitely you are going to create some kind of a gradle or a maven project not some simple java project because if you are creating some simple java project you will not get uh, this kind of a modularization like test uh, you can put in some different folder resource in different just only it will create a one src folder only for you inside the project so if you are going to create this maven project how you can add the dependency how you can add the selenium java client library into your project and how you can start using it so what you have to do you can copy this url or maybe you can search on the google like uh, selenium maven dependency once you will search this uh, selenium maven dependency you will find this first open the first url and all the versions that uh, are available for your selenium java so you will see all the versions are here 4.8.1 is the latest one which has been released on the february 17 itself so whatever the version that you want to use in your project so you can just you have to click on that particular version and you can start using it suppose i want to use 4.6.0 just you have to click on it and as i was saying that you can create multiple project multiple different type of a project so i have created a maven project in that case i have to copy this and add in my pom.xml file suppose i have created a gradle project so in the gradle you can see that syntax to add this dependency it has been changed so this is how you has to add in your gradle project if suppose you are creating some different project gradle kotlin is there or gradle uh, grape is there so you, you can uh, import like this so we are using the maven just copy this and uh, you has uh, you can see this dependencies so inside the dependencies you has to add this so dependency uh, uh, after this dependency you can paste it here and after that you have to click on a control s you have to save this file once you will uh, click on a save file you can see it is building this project and automatically it is downloading this java client java library in your project now if you will see this maven dependencies folder you can see all the jars related to my selenium java it is there in my project and now i can start using it in my project in my framework so all the java chrome driver java chromium java A sorry selenium api selenium is dev tools firefox i so every files remote session safari sport session and if you will see inside this like uh, chrome driver you can see this is the package selenium dot chrome package is there inside this these are some different classes like chrome driver chrome options class chrome driver class this file is there so this files method i am going to use in my application to automate the test cases these are some uh, you can see this is the constructor is there that i have to use it if i am going to create the object for this okay so this is how you will be able to add selenium java in your project and you can start using it so you have not you don't have to know uh, go in so earlier what we were doing like build path we have to do we have to click on a configure build path and after that after that you have to go in the libraries you have to click on the add external jars so whatever the java client library you have downloaded you have to again import and again you have to know apply uh, finish it right if suppose tomorrow you want to set up the same thing in another project there also you have to search kind of things but if you are having this pom.xml file and you have 
just imported this package anywhere you will go in uh, take this project automatically it will download this particular java uh, selenium java library in your project and you can start using it so this is the way that we have to use and uh, the same we will be using for test engines for the other libraries that we are going to use in our project so we are going to use in the same way so this is about the <coughs> selenium web driver java client library the same steps i have mentioned here what you has to do and it will automatically download the jars in your project so as you see in my uh, folder so we have done the setup for this selenium client library we have done the setup for this browser we already have in our system so, and what is the next requirement so next requirement is we need the browser driver as well if you are working with selenium web driver right so next one i will show you how you can download and set up this browser setup browser driver setup in your system to start working on the selenium web driver so next one is set up a selenium uh, browser uh, driver exe suppose if you are working on a chrome or a is or safari so you have to download the specific browser version driver exe file in your system so what you have to do i have mentioned the same things just the url and the properties for the is and the chrome here so what he has to do suppose you first of all uh, suppose i'm working on the browser you have to check the version for your browser okay like what is the version name the same browser version same driver version you have to download for that so this is one zero one one zero dot this one so what you have to do go on this google you have to uh, search for chrome driver download you will find this website go on this particular website and here you will be seeing all the releases all the versions are available there for you and you have to download whatever the version of your browser suppose i am having 1110.5481 this one is there right so you have to download this last digit is not matching that's not an issue like 178 is there but here you can see not 178 only the 77 so you can download this once you will click on this it will open this particular page uh, as per the requirements suppose you want to download it for the mac or linux or the windows so i have to download it for, for the windows so in windows it will always be 32 bits so you have to download this once you will download you can see this chrome driver.exe file is there you have to unzip it Okay, so you have done the unzip now i want to use it one way is you can put it anywhere there is no problem you can put in any of the folder and you can use it by giving the this path you can give the path for that right you can give the path for your chrome driver and you can use it in your application or in your project but the recommended one is you, you should use uh, this kind of a exe inside your project only you should put that in your project so that if tomorrow someone is there and he also want uh, that project in his system so he should be able to get the resource file for you he should not be missing any such kind of a files because this file is placed in some different folder not in the project so he will be missed if he will be getting this project new tester is there right so in that case you should use inside this only let me put this file here copy it from here go to your c users and i think in eclipse workspace this this is the location for my project project weekend src folder main folder resources folder keep it here now if you will go on your project and if you will refresh it so you have to do the refresh so now you can see this file is there chrome driver.exe file is there in my resources is folder package so this is how you have to use it sir i have a question right yeah so uh on the real project right when we go mm -hmm. so all these steps right will there be a pre-built sop for us to follow or 
how we gonna set up everything uh, see this is the pre steps only that you has to do and uh, if there is any change is there requirement as per the project specific you can do in that way as well but there is no particular sop that you has to do only in that way only but this is the simple steps that you has to follow uh, while creating any any automation process okay so when 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 we go to the project right and they'll give us our system and everything so this all we have to do ourselves yes this you have to do by yourself only because mm-hmm. you don't know how to do that they will not provide oh. uh, such kind of a things to you okay so you has to do by yourself so this is about the setup of this and if i want to refer and this particular chrome driver.exe because keeping the file inside the project does not mean that i am using it so this is just uh, referring but now i have to use it as well so to use this particular driver.exe file you has to use this particular line of line in your code that system.set property and this is the property name and we have this property value is there so you have to give the path to a chrome driver.exe file with this help with this line you will be able to use this chrome driver for your application or for your test cases the same way you has to do for the edge if you are working for the edge browser so you has to do the same steps for the edge browser as well now let's create from our first test case in our selenium how we can do so this scope we will copy this property from here so what we will do here so this is the package that we have created we have to click on new class so here we will be creating our first selenium example this is the class name that we are giving here and class name always start with the first uh, character of every word should be the capital so that's how i have given the name and i will be including the main method because main is the first method of java that will be executed by our jvm so we has to include the public static void main method for that once we will be start using the uh, test ng so in that case we don't require this uh, public static void main method so there are some tags are defined in our test ng that we can use to run our test cases or to run our code so for now just click on a finish so this is the test first class that we have created so this is my class name and this class is defined as a public this is the method public static void main method is there that will be first triggered by our jvm whenever we will be start executing it so now if we are talking about our selenium web driver so first of all we have to set the property system dot set property and the property name we have to give like web driver dot chrome dot driver because we are going to use the chrome driver so we have to give the property name as a chrome if i am going to use the is i in that case i have to give a is here because that will be referring for the is driver for me like this and here i have to give the path path of chrome driver what is the path of my chrome driver so right click on your chrome driver.exe file go to the properties and here you can see this is the path so just copy this location paste in your value so you can see it is done now next step is now we are ready we are having uh, we have done the setup of our driver.exe file now we are ready to use it so for that we will be creating the uh class of our uh, class object of our chrome driver because if you are going to work with the chrome browser in that case you has to create the object of a chrome driver and we are going to store it in the web driver interface so this concept i will be explaining in the java because now maybe you will not understand this concept so this is how i have to create the object so i am creating a object of a chrome driver class and i am storing it in the web driver interface object okay because 
this web driver interface can store the object of any type i can even store inside the chrome driver i can store for the edge also i can store uh, for the firefox also so in that way i i will be able to use only one variable for all type of a uh, classes for all type of a chrome driver classes and i will be able to execute in any of the browser so that's why we should be using the web driver interface object to store any such kind of a object now if you'll see this is throwing me an error so we has to import this chrome driver from the selenium so that selenium we have already imported that particular li library in our project so we have to import it because in java this is like a concept of a java if anything you want to use in your application so you has to import that import that in your class or import in your file only then you will be able to use it so we have imported it and now we can use this chrome driver in our class similarly we have to import this web driver this is done so what is the work of this this line so this uh, the work of this line is referring the driver for our uh, application for our program and this driver will create the object of a chrome driver and will open the chrome browser for you if you will if you want to run it how you can run right click on uh, your class file run as java application once you will click on run as a java application you will see our chrome browser will get launch it will not open anything any website but our chrome browser has been launched so how it has been launched it has been launched with the help of a this line because whenever we are creating the object so it is creating a object of a browser for me and you can see it is writing like chrome is being controlled by automated test software because it has been launched with the help of some automation tool or automation script so that's why this notification is coming inside that and it, it has been launched suppose if i will comment this line system dot set property and directly if i will try to launch the chrome browser it will throw me an error and many faces such kind of errors and exceptions as well so oh i not see it Mm, not sure but it has to throw some exception that uh, illegal uh, exception i have to set the path for this otherwise i will not be able to launch and refer it once our driver has been set up it has been launched so the first step that we do is opening the website opening the application website so how we can do that so to do that we have to use driver dot get method is there in our selenium so get method is used to open any particular website or a url inside your browser so we have launched a chrome browser so we has to use this get method and inside this get method you have to give double quotes and you have to give the a website name suppose i want to open a google.com only this is a real website right so google.com i can give the name here and if you will run this test case first it will launch a chrome browser for me and then it will launch the google.com website inside that so you can see browser has been launched and the google.com website has been launched so you see we have not done so much configuration simply just we have installed the jdk and, and we have opened the eclipse and we have uh, created maven project in pom.xml file we have added the dependency we have downloaded chrome driver.exe and we are able to start our automation okay now suppose i want to maximize it so this is the command that is given in selenium if you want to maximize the browser driver.manage.windows.maximize so what it will do it will maximize your uh, chrome browser till the complete window after opening the url so 
so in the similar way you can open any application url in that because if you are working on any company definitely you will be opening the testing environment in that and that is not accessible outside of your project so the same url uh, you can give inside that and same url it will launch and open in the browser so this is how you can do that So anyone has any doubt in that? No, sir, not right now. Okay, because maybe tomorrow today we will stop uh, to here because this is the first. yeah, it almost two hours, more than two hours. Ah uh, yes, good. and we have covered even many things in that. So we will stop here, and from next Saturday we will start uh, and explore some more concept about our Selenium. So we will be covering uh, every concept, and we will see every example here, and some live website example in that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. We can join. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So thanks. Bye. So sir, uh, these slides you will share the link, right? Yeah, I will share the link. I will upload in some Google Drive, and I will share the same link with all of you. And okay. recordings as well. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Bye.